allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to announce in accordance with the requirements of open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel. Tonight is Selectman Bob Ebersole's last Selectman meeting, as he will step down as Vice Chair of the Board of Selectmen after tonight's meeting and as the Chair of the Charter Review Committee at the end of this month. Mr. Ebersole has been involved in town government his whole life and the concept of giving to the town is part of who he is. As a selectman, Bob has been part of the process to hire a new town manager, town council, and school superintendent. He's also played a major role in supporting the building of a new middle high school and the major pavement and road improvements through debt exclusion. His experience in town government began when he joined the fire department as an on-call firefighter at age 16. Bob also served as a reserve officer and continued to serve the town in the following capacities over the years. On the planning board from 1977 to 82, as the MRPC town representative in 1978, on the 250th anniversary committee in 1978, serving as the treasurer, on the board of health as an agent in 1978 through 89, on the computer advisory committee, in 1987 through 89, as the town clerk, treasurer, and collector, 1983 through 1989, <coughs> the registrar of voters, 1983 uh, through 88, the building committee, 1987 through 90, on the sewer commission, in 2010 through 2013 as its chair, on the board of selectmen, from 2013 through present, where he serves as our vice chair, and on the Charter Review Committee since 2017, and he is our present chair. He's a wealth of how and why things are done in our town, and he clearly is an asset that the town will miss. Thank you, Bob Ubisaw. comment from the board yeah just um, said it before Bob but it's been truly a pleasure to serve with you and your dedication to service to the town has been an inspiration to me and we're certainly gonna miss you when the town's missing out big time thank you and I wanted to thank you Bob um, for being a bit of a mentor and for really taking the time to understand me and I've said this before but also for being kind and I've really appreciated it and you'll be really missed thank you I'd like to call the town manager. Yeah. Just wanted to share a few pictures that we dug out of the archives <laughs> of Bob um, from old annual reports. <laughs> but from 1978, <laughs> bottom left corner. There we go. <laughs> Photo great glasses. <laughs> 1979 and 1980. And this. Um, true evidence of how long Bob has been involved in town government. <clears throat> so we're all going to feel a void upon Bob's departure. Bob has dedicated his life to public service and has taken the true meaning of public service seriously. That it is to make a difference in people's lives by serving the common good and improving Lunenburg by giving back. <coughs> Bob. We will miss your wealth of knowledge about every aspect of Lunenburg and beyond. We will miss your ability to propose solutions that brought about compromise, your fairness, your sense of humor, your kindness, your ability to listen to all sides <clears throat> of an issue without prejudice, and the balance that you've brought to this board. I am truly grateful for your support, your good advice, and truly miss you. <clears throat> We thank you for all you have given of yourself to serve the interests of the people of Lunenburg, and we wish you the very best in the next chapter of your life. Thank you. 
presenting some flowers. Uh, I'd like to open for public comment and invite our state representatives, uh, Jennifer Benson and Stephen Hay, to join us. <laughs> Hello. Good evening. <laughs> um, well, I'm not happy to be here tonight because the only reason I'm here is to wish you well, of course, but to also tell you how just saddened I am that we're losing you because how could we fill all these positions? Who would be that crazy? Uh, but as someone who has served in many of the same positions as you have in the town, I know how much work it is and how much dedication it is. And, you know, we really owe you a debt. And so, you know, I hope they appreciate you down there as much as we do here, but you always have a home in Lunenburg. You have a citation from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Robert Ebersall in recognition of your many years of public service and commitment to the town of Lunenburg. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this 20th day of November 2018, uh, signed by Robert A. DeLeo, Speaker of the House, and offered by State Representative Jennifer Benson and State Representative Stephen Hay. Congratulations. Thank you. We also have a representative from State Senator Dean Tran's office. Good evening, my name is Kyle Shelton. I'm State Senator Trans Legislative Aid and uh, on his absence um, due to a prior engagement, he wishes he could have been here tonight, but in his stead it is my honor as a member of his office to present you, Ms. Uh, Selectman Ebersall, with a citation on behalf of the Massachusetts State Senate recognizing your retirement and your dedication to your, and lifelong service to the town of Lunenburg. Thank you. any public comment from the public please a couple things but one Bob uh, you know how I feel I, I love you man you've been nothing but a friend and a colleague and inspiration to me uh, and I can't thank you more and wish you the best I was surprised, though, with the resume that Mr. Toll mentioned. Is that all you did? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, mean I, I, would, I would think there would be a little more. And the other reason why I'm here tonight is I just want to bring up this article that was in the paper uh, when it comes to the, uh, uh, the demolition of the cemetery. And I was quite disturbed by this headline. Uh, I'm sure most of you were. And all I'm asking is, uh, well, actually, I'm, I'm uh, uh, requesting that if you can have a joint meeting with the uh, commission from the cemetery and just to find out what happened, uh, because this, I'm hoping, is not true. And I'm hoping that every person who has a headstone is in place, uh, especially during this time of year. Uh, but I'll leave this with you. I'm sure you must have read it. Thank you. But again, I wish everybody a happy, safe, and holiday, and Mr. Ebersol, God bless you, and best to you in the future. Thank you. Paula Bertram, 312 Townsend Harbor Road. I just wanted to come and thank you for all of that you've done for the town of Lunenburg. We didn't always agree on every issue but I know that we both looked at things as, as objectively as we could and did what we thought was best after much contemplative thought and a lot of research. And you will truly, truly be missed by the town of Lunenburg. And I wish you, you and, your, and Troy the best in, in the future. Any other public comment from the public? Bob? Um, so I'd like to extend my thanks to all who have communicated their appreciation for uh, the service that I and Troy have done for the town. Um, as I thought about what I wanted to say, I want to do some re remembrance of Jim Deming, the former fire chief, Fred Hobbs, the former police chief, 
uh, my former father-in-law, Kurt Penniman, and uh, former town clerk and state senator, Mary Padula. Uh, they all were part of my life here in Lunenburg, uh, learning what the history was, learning what their viewpoints were, even to the point where 30 years after the middle school was built, I came across records of Mary Padula where she did her projections of school population and they were within 10. So it's, it's fascinating what goes on here in Lunenburg. <clears throat> I want to thank my political appoint, opponents over the years, some who were above board and some were underhanded. Um, you made me more prepared, more measured, more analytical, and more prepared for the unexpected. A um, couple of uh, other things that I was involved in, in the middle of the evening or the middle of the night, I was the one who put the letters town hall on town hall because until that point it wasn't named. Somebody should put 17 on it so the fire trucks will know where the town hall is. Uh, I was involved in getting the mailing of the warrant on uh, a bylaw to make sure that the citizens got notice of the, of the meeting, more than just notification in the newspaper, supported the recall measure uh, that we've never had to use, but it's a good thing to have for people to think about. I was involved in getting the first electronic vote counting here in town, albeit was a system that had chads. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> Lunenburg didn't have that problem. So. <clears throat> uh, thanks to all the town department heads who lead their staff to meet the high expectations of the town with limited funds. Thanks to Heather and to the board. Thanks to all the volunteers who have been or are serving on boards and commissions. Um, I grew up as sort of the peacemaker in my family and I've sort of transformed that into various town boards and committees. Um, I charge others to do that, learn it, or better yet, try to figure out why the other person is positioned as they are so that you can address their underlying needs. <clears throat> And one of the good things about Facebooks, there's some memes that come across that I like. Uh, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. Uh, in life, it's important to know when to stop arguing with people and simply let them be wrong. And then the other one, you know, when to hold them and when to show them. When to fold them. Uh, I want to send, extend my thanks to my husband, Troy, for moving to Lunenburg, being involved even when it was not appreciated, and for supporting me regardless how long my meetings went. <clears throat> you made a difference in the Board of Health, the Sewer Commission, and the PAC in ways that will last a long time. You showed me how I could push back against injustice. Forty years ago, I was on the 250th Anniversary Committee. Ten years from now, it will be the town's 300th anniversary. Perhaps that will be my next Lunenburg committee. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Well, now we have a little business to do before we let you. Yep. <laughs> right off in the sunset. Our uh, first agenda item is a joint meeting with the planning board for the purpose of appointing uh, a candidate for, to fill the vacancy. Is the planning board here and have they called their board to, to order? Okay. Uh, I believe we have one candidate. There is a talent bank form for Paula Bertram uh, all of us know Paul of our term have does the board have a recommendation or have you deliberated in any way okay fine uh, Ms. Bertram can I ask you to come forward we usually ask people to tell us why they're interested <laughs> I'm, I'm very curious to see why you're interested <laughs> Um, as you all know, when I was serving on the Board of Selectmen, I was the liaison to the planning board. <clears throat> and it was something I was really, really interested in. I had the opportunity to understand how the bylaws work, to understand how the public hearing process works, um, to see how the planning board works firsthand. And to me, it's one of the most important roles in the town of Lunenburg. 
Um, and I think that it's something that I'm interested in, my background from the Board of Health and, and looking and understanding plans, looking at how the various land use boards work together um, and, and understanding the whole process and how that process flows, I think is something that I can bring to the planning board. Um, very interested in both, you know, ob obviously subdivision, subdivision of land, um, as well as bylaws. Um, one of the things I'm really interested in is I attended a number of smart growth and smart development um, seminars when I was w serving as a liaison to the planning board, and I think that's something that I'd like to see incorporated more. Um, innovative things that address stormwater, like pervious pavement and stormwater maintenance and things that, from a, from a land use perspective, I'm very interested in. Um, and just looking forward to continuing to serve the town in a different capacity. I'll ask the usual question we ask, which is that this appointment, if we do vote it, goes till next town election. Will you be interested in seeking election at that time? I would consider it. Okay. Any other questions from Harborwood? Um, sure. Um, where this is a joint appointment with planning, having experienced this, I'm not sure why planning doesn't have a seat at the table for this process in terms of whether or not they have a question or they want to participate. They do. Um, with like microphones and whatnot. I um, went through this process myself and it went on for several months. Um, I was a part of two separate interviews, um, both at planning and then at Selectman and had extensive written questions that I had to go through and submit. And I understand that we know a lot about Paula <laughs> and that there's only one candidate and so there's a lot of logic here, but I like consistency and I don't understand the very diverse difference between this appointment and one that happened very recently um, that I put a lot of effort into. Um, I think that where this is a planning board member and we have four votes and four votes, I don't understand the, the fact that we're not inviting them to truly participate in this uh, process. Is there anyone on the planning board that would like to ask a question or make a comment? Very happy that she left. I would make a motion that we appoint uh, Paula Bertram for the remaining term to the next election to the planning board. Second that. Okay, the way this works is it's a joint vote. So there are currently four of us tonight and four of you. So the, a majority would be five. Uh, and I'll take a, uh, a show of hands to start unless we have an objection. All those in favor of Paula Bertram as a Member to select uh, the planning board. Any opposed? Yeah, I declare it. Thank you very much. Great. Mm. Or the town clerk gets sworn in right away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, our 710 appointment is with the DPW director for a report on pavement management, uh, plan, and drainage. Aye. Jack? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the select board, Ms. Lemieux, this is a tough act to follow with these, uh, look at them, scaring them out already. <laughs> tough act to follow with these dignitaries in it. Um, Bob and I had a chance to say our goodbyes last week, but I would re be remiss if I didn't publicly um, j just mention it. You know, I thought about what I was gonna say, but I, there's no way I could articulate it eloquently enough so um, I wish you enjoy all the best of course and and a very simple sincere thank you for for being my friend and uh, supporting me being a mentor to me for for all these years I could always count on you uh, was lifted by you many times and uh, you'll be missed selfishly I'll miss you a great deal good luck thank you um, before I get into this uh, debt exclusion and all these numbers um, that are so awfully important, I'd like to introduce my, which I should have done some time ago, but haven't spent a lot of time at these meetings, um, my new administrative assistant who did in fact put much of this together. Um, 
Samantha Lennox. She'd see she is standing up. If she stands up, it, would, it won't look much different. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Uh, so, uh, simply stated, we, the town manager and I thought it'd be a a good idea at some point towards the end of the fall to just give you a uh, a, a basic overview of, of where we are with the debt exclusion that you all know um, was voted I believe in 2016 and uh, offered us the opportunity uh, to infuse four million dollars into the pavement management plan but not into the pavement management plan as a whole but into that portion of the pavement management plan dedicated to local streets, um, smaller streets, if you will, because we found that although the plan um, was actually very good and the revision w was uh, a little better, um, we didn't have enough money to get beyond those main roads, those, those heavily traveled roads. And if we paved them, by the time we had enough money gathered together, we'd just go back and pave those roads. So, uh, <clears throat> in fact, Bob was instrumental in this um, in getting this move forward. It came to a ballot, uh, and it did pass, thankfully. And I, you know, somewhat prejudiced, I guess, but we're really proud of the way that these roads have come out. We've, we've had uh, some constructive criticisms, but I think all in all, people can really see what they got for their money and uh, are genuinely, you know, pretty happy with it. So with that $4 million that we were, that we were afforded on July 1st, 2016, uh, you'll see in the handout uh, in front of you, uh, and, and actually the, the goal of this, because we've been questioned uh, so often, is uh, to make sure we spend the 500000 that's been dedicated to drainage. So this, this exercise can be simplified on the paving end by saying we have another year and a half. We're ahead of schedule. Um, we have approximately $1.4 million. Um, we had a great price from our vendor, so so we're ahead in the schedule. The only thing that that's a drawback for us or that holds us back is that is that the construction season is so short. Actually, you know, this presentation was supposed to be maybe a little later because if it wasn't for the snow in the last couple of weeks and the storm, we'd still be paving. We were into the the construction year 2019. Um, with things like overlays and uh, and first course, which by the way, and uh, for those not here and that have, have asked, uh, the folks prior to the payment always get a letter, either in their mailbox, which is probably illegal, or in their door. Uh, and sometimes we'll just do the first course and, then, and they'll get a second letter because the first letter suggests because of the pavement moratorium that you folks um, voted upon and, and rightfully so it gives them sort of a second chance or a last chance okay this is the leveler so if you're going to dig into the street do it now um, I'm happy to report there has been not one single issue as I anticipated because there had not been a single issue up to this point the communication has been been um, dispersed through the town town's website through the door-to-door -door uh, operation. I now have a DPW Facebook page, which I'd like you to like. Um, we can talk about putting public safety announcements on discussing Lunenburg, but that's a that's a negotiation for another time. Um, so what we've done is we is uh, for that 3.5 million, uh, we actually have one 485 left which we will have no trouble spending, and we may even exceed that plan, which we expect to revise in the spring. It's a five-year plan, needs a revision every five years. We'll go back and look at what, what needs to be done. We'll again live a, um, give each road a, a value and see what happens first, um, and spend the rest of that debt exclusion, whatever we have left, on those roads. Um, you know, it seems funny to talk about the roads because, it, you know, prior to the building reuse committee on the building reuse, there wasn't a, a, a meeting that went by. It was the roads, the roads, the roads. I think with your help 
and with the help of the residents who are, are footing the bill that you know that's been a success and uh, uh, happy pleased to bring that to you and I think it'll be a further success and I hope when when uh, I'm no longer here to do it or some of you may or may not be that we understand the the, the idea that this isn't just a one-shot deal we can't just pay them and forget about them but that um, you know now that we're up to that C plus C or C plus that you as a board chose to be the value uh, in the condition of the roads once we get there it'll take a lot less money to stay there uh, which is what we intend to do but the main topic is the uh, really what I'd like to get to is the drainage now we were we were allocated five hundred thousand dollars of that four million specifically for drainage now the opinion of the town accountant and the town manager at uh, was that this was not specifically drainage for the debt exclusion roads but for stormwater uh, and addressing stormwater issues townwide most of it as it turns out was for the uh, debt exclusion roads because the the protocol didn't change for me every time i came to before i said well we're going to look at the drainage we always look at the drainage see what we have to repair see what we have to add or delete before we pave it because i mean it just makes simple sense and wouldn't we look foolish to put good money into pavement and then have a, a drain collapse or, or something so long before the stormwater uh coalition or task force or, uh, and, and long before that permit came into place, we were in practice of doing that. The difficult thing now is that we're moving at such a pace, some doubling and tripling our pavement, that we need help in that practice. And that help is identified in the lengthy uh, detail that follows the, uh, the cover sheet on this. Now, I'm not about to go through each one of those, but uh, in the interest of supporting the, the figure, and again, thank you, Sam, you can see the date on the left for every single invoice, if not the time the work was done or the time the material was purchased, um, and, then a, and then a value put to it, and, a, and it's identified. Now, some of the identified quantities are in the contract of our paving vendor. So by contract, as he does things like you'll see adjust or rebuild drainage um, structures, that's in the contract, that's a contract value, that's a drainage expense. So I've broken that out. Uh, there are other things outside the contract. Um, you know, the biggest one may be uh, the berms along, along the edge of the road, and there's replacing entire catch basins. Um, for those people, I'm going to actually just, just give you a little, I don't know if this will show over here, but, um, and I don't mean to insult your intelligence, but, but, th but for those that don't know, there's a large expense. Here's the, uh, here's the road probably in its failure. These, these indentions over here are wheel ruts. Uh, you can see the crown is flattened out, and these edges are probably broken up. So, and I think it was Mrs. Luck that, that said, uh, so actually, paving the road in itself is an advantage to the stormwater drainage. And it is. But in the first course, of course, goes, goes curb for curb and shapes the road. So it could be uh, getting into the definition and actual drainage. But if I took the leveling course and put it into the drainage, it would just blow that $500,000. Out of, the, out of the water but on the top course you'll see in most places a berm that's built right into the uh, into the top course which collects the water here and it's put it on places where where the topography is pretty extreme so instead of the water running down the wheel ruts or off the side of the road and breaking up the side of the road the berms collect the volume and velocity and put it in a place that we can control, be it a catch basin, a rain garden, uh, a swale, or something like that. So that's a very definitive um, 
component of the drainage and you'll see that in there but also with the drainage I mean excuse me also with the berm you'll see um, and it's under mayor wood all this backing up of the berm the loom and otherwise because what happens if you haven't seen it in your own yard is that you know here's the roadway not a very good picture then there's a high berm leaving a, a void here to where the grass or other material w was in people's front yards and yeah we could leave it like that but it would look like hell and people wouldn't stand for it so what we do if they have grass we install loom right back to um, to meet the topography if they have decorative stone we do that and that's a very labor-intensive um, operation but necessarily but a, but a necessary one so um, putting that all together and you'll see the numbers on the right now the the PJ Keating numbers are the ones that I mentioned are in the contract the PMP pavement management plan drainage those are things that were done such as the berm outside of the contract numbers but important to the necessary control of the stormwater. Uh, we're right on schedule. We've got a year and a half left. We've got a million five. We've got a year and a half left, and we're a little light on the drainage component. So let 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 it be clearly known that we have, in fact, done our due diligence with allocating a good portion or the portion dedicated uh, to drainage. So when you see that ninety-seven thousand dollar amount, um, it's not quite ninety-seven thousand because already we have two two culverts we're going to replace that are, are have gone through the procurement process asked and went out to bid but we're not going to do them until next June because each one um, <clears throat> will require the traffic being closed down in a detour and, and I felt that this shouldn't happen until the school buses stop running uh, it's one thing to you know uh, force in a way people to go around a detour but we can never compromise the bus route so and one one of those culverts is forty thousand dollars as an engineer's estimate uh, on on Sunset Lane the other culvert is on Northfield Road it's a sort of a two-year-old capital plan project that uh, is also around the 40 mark but half of that will be will be financed to a, uh, the um, the capital article through which it was passed so uh, you know an estimate 40 uh, say 60 out of that 97 so we're looking at 37 or forty thousand dollars again I can't really say it strongly enough for those who were concerned about uh, me doing my due diligence and making sure that that drainage money was was uh, was put in the right spot. I, I hope this puts theirs and your mind at ease. Um, there is no more drainage money after that, except for what we're allocated in the uh, in the operational budget, which I think is around twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars. Of course, there's always Chapter ninety money, and uh, when that time comes, I'm working with the town manager now. There's also the, the element of our bridge repair, which for some reason MassDOT has taken it upon themselves to, to survey uh, all the bridges and even the large culverts. And we find that some of those are, um, well, I wouldn't say they're in failure, but, but they need work and some may be in so far as, as being replaced. So our focus is always on stormwater and particularly uh, as it affects the pavement management plan. I would just like, uh, this is again not a time to bring this up, but it should be a, an item for the board to uh, revisit those thoughts and those arguments in a kind sense of what we're going to do with, with storm water blowing out of private property. I know it's easy to say, well, let's just take care of these residents and and I mean that's the business I'm in that's the business we're all in but um, we'll be looking at uh, some millions of dollars so let, let, let's talk about that uh, somewhere down the road not not too far down the road any questions 
comment I would make is one of the things that when uh, we supported the uh, debt exclusion, we said we needed to have a funding plan to make sure that this is going to not have to come back for another debt exclusion in the future. And every year, the town manager's budget has increased by $50,000 out of motor vehicle excise receipts, receipts uh, to increase the budgeted amount outside the debt exclusion for the roads with my understanding is that the goal is to get to a million dollars a year out of the operating plus chapter 90. Um, and then that will theoretically keep us at the sea level for all our roads. I, you know, I think you're exactly right. And we sat here four or five years ago and for years and years before that wondering just how we were going to do that. And we all knew, I mean, I'm sure you, you know, you saw that curve on that graph that I showed you every week for a couple of years, that what costs a dollar today to repair on a road that's, that's not compromised, if you let it go and kick the can down the street, that it's going to be triple and quadruple that. So now that we've had this infusion, there is that plan that, that you just spoke of, and it, it, it'll be consistent with that graph insofar as if, if, if the money is able to stay there and we don't, we, you know, we don't grab it for other things, that'll cost us less money each year to stay at that, <coughs> excuse me, C or C plus level townwide. That, that is the plan. It looks, at least for now, uh, that it's been a success, and hopefully it will be going forward. Seeing no one at the podium. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. And uh, happy Thanksgiving to all. Enjoy it. Uh, hopefully it won't be icy and, and snowy. Cool. All righty. Our 730 appointment is a tax classification hearing. I'll read the notice. Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on November 20th, 2018 at 730 as required by Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 56 on the issue of allocating the local property tax levy among the four classes of real and personal property for fiscal year 2019. The hearing will be held in the Lunenburg Town Hall, second floor, Joseph Pallotta Meeting Room at 17 Main Street, Lunenburg, Mass. Per the Board of Selectmen. Uh, I call that hearing to order. Um, we are waiting uh, from a preliminary certification from the Department of Revenue, so we won't be able to conclude that hearing this evening. Where I'm going to entertain a motion to continue to December 4th at 7.05, but is there any comment, question, or public comment on that topic at, at this time? I think the generic comment has been that uh, while it would be nice to reduce uh, re residential property taxes, uh, since we have such a small commercial and personal property tax basis, that any substantial change to a residential property would entail almost taxing the businesses out of existence. So that's a lot of the times why we kept the same level of taxes for all, all classes. And note that other communities that do have the split tax rate are trying to slowly move to a single tax rate. I agree. I think we anticipate that it, the, the hearing, once we get the data from the <coughs> Department of Revenue, will most likely be more about setting the rate as opposed to determining if we want a separate rate for the four classes. We, to date, we've had a single rate across all classes of, of real estate. Any other public comment or question? I'd make a motion we uh, uh, adjourn the hearing until uh, December 20th. December 4th. December 4th at 7.05 p.m. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Our next appointment is our finance director with our quarterly financial report. We didn't save it till the very end, Karen. <laughs> I know, I'm so happy. <laughs> Before I even start, I would like to personally thank Bob because 
Bob actually was elected as the treasurer collect the clerk in 1983, and he hired me in October of 1984, and I've been here ever since. So without you, I probably wouldn't be here. So thank you, and I wish you and Troy all the best. Okay. Um, this is for the this is the expenditure revenue summary for the first quarter of 2019, ending November th uh, November. September 30th, 2019, and as of September 30th, 2018, we have collected 28.3% of our revenue estimates. Um, everything is on track. A few of the things that I will point out is that we have collected 15.41 of our local receipt estimate as of that date. Um, when we had the special town meeting on November 13th, none of our estimates for local receipts were changed, so all of those estimates will remain the same. I can tell you that as far as the different categories go on local receipts, for our fines, we've collected 27% of our estimated revenues. Local option meals tax, we've collected 27% of our estimated revenues. Motor vehicle excise, we're currently only at 7.81% of that estimate, but the majority of that revenue we actually won't receive until the third quarter of 2019, so you will see those numbers significantly increase at that time. Investment income, we've collected 21% of the estimate. Our miscellaneous non-recurring revenue is at 31%. Our fees are at 25%. Departmental revenue schools are at 23%. And penalties and interest are at 21%. So um, everything is trending just the way that we expected on the local receipt side, so that's a good sign. Taxes and state aid are the same. We're right at about 25% on both of those categories. So our revenues are trending right where we expected them to be at this point in time. On the expenditure side, we have expended 30.2% of budgeted expenditures. Most departments are right where they should be at that 25% threshold. If you were to look at the report, you would see um, that there are departments who, on the report, it shows that they've spent higher than 25% of their budget, but that's because they open purchase orders for expenditures at the beginning of the year that carry them through the year. So the actual expenditures are right where they need to be. We, had, we did have a few surpluses on the expenditure side. One was our liability insurance and one was our workers' compensation insurance. And that was due to participation, rewards, and dividend credits that we received from our insurance carrier. And as you all know, we did adjust those budgets at the special town meeting in November. The only other budget that, at, as of 9-30-18, showed any type of a deficit was our injury leave account, but that deficit will be eliminated through a reimbursement that we receive from our insurance company for IOD insurance. The expenditure estimates will change um, based upon what just happened at the November 13th town meeting, and those changes will be reflected in the next quarter. So as of right now, everything's right where we would expect it to be. Any questions or comments? Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up the good work. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Same Residents as well. Okay, our next item are interviews appointments. First is a heavy equipment operator. This is a town manager appointment, correct? Correct. So this is to fill a vacant position for heavy equipment operator at the DPW. William O'Neill is who I'm recommending for this appointment for you to ratify. I make a motion that we ratify the town manager's appointment of William O'Neill as DPW heavy equipment operator. Second. 
Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And we have two candidates for the Cultural Council. Uh, Ashley Faherty? Yeah. <coughs> here? Yes, right here. Can I ask you to come forward? Tell us who you are and why you want to be on the cultural. Uh, I'm Ashley Faraday, 298 Highland Street. Did I do that right? Um, I've uh, I've been in Lunenburg for about four years now. So, Bob, I haven't gotten to witness all your greatness, so, but I'm disappointed. So, <laughs> I'm still relatively new. But um, I've been wanting to serve the community, and I feel like the cultural council would be a good fit for me. Uh, I've always believed that fostering the arts and humanities in a community is extremely important and enriching for the town citizens, so I'd like to have a hand in that. And I have two young kids I'm raising here as well, so I want them to be experience that as well. So, yeah. Any questions or comments? Thanks for stepping forward. Sure. I would make a motion. We uh, appoint Ashley Fayette, uh, 298 Highland Street, for a term to expire June 30th, 2021. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so you'll need to check in with the town clerk, get sworn in. Okay. And uh, congratulations. Thanks for coming forward. Thank you. Next one is Thea St. Martin. Hi there. Could Hello. Tell us who you are and why you want to be on the cultural. So I'm Thea St. Martin. Um, I live at 488 Holman Street. Um, I am a biologist by trade, um, but I'm also an amateur painter and um, photographer. I'm an orchid enthusiast. Um, I garden a lot. I'm, and I'm an avid home brewer. I've been home brewing my own beer for over 20 years, so I have a lot of hobbies, <laughs> more than uh, I have time for. But I've been looking for a way to get involved in the town, and I thought that the Cultural Council would be a good way to get my foot in the door that doesn't have the same sort of, um, the big, this big, big of an obligation as some of the other um, positions that are open currently. So I'm just looking for a way to sort of just get my foot in the door to, um, to help out in town. Great. Any questions or comments from the board? Make a motion. We appoint Thea St. Martin, 488 Holman Street, uh, to the Cultural Council for a term to expire June 30th, 2021. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming forward. Bob, you make all of our motions and you do it in such a smooth way. <laughs> We're going to be motioning left and right after. <laughs> keep, keep the moving, meeting moving. <laughs> The practice making motions <laughs> there there are some organizations that actually have the motions typed up in advance so that you're able to actually do that so yeah we're gonna miss that uh, first item of old business is uh, earth removal permits renewals and we have a couple for PJ Keating and one for Powell stone and gravel so who's gonna do this is Adam or building Hey, Gary. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, on August 21st, the board uh, held a hearing on Keating, their earth removal permits. The board took some action and renewed a number of them until next year. Uh, they did not renew two of them, and the remainder of them, you requested adi additional information. Uh, Keating has provided that information, um, and as a result of that, I f wrote a follow-up memo, and I've made recommendations for, uh, based on what we made the findings on. Uh, if the board would like, I can go through each of those and sh talk about them so you have an uh, understanding, or I can just answer your questions, whichever way you would like. I think it'd be helpful to go through the memo. It was okay. A memo. Uh, the first one, the permit was number 14. 14 is located to the west of Fort Pond Road, adjacent to Lancaster. On that corner, there's actually three permits. Two of them were renewed, and this one was held. The reason this was held is the board has some questions about how deep the excavation was done at that location. The permit had a condition that says you could not go below the elevation of Fort Pond Road. 
Well, they were actually considerably below that when they fight, gave us the information. Um, they were about 30 feet deeper than what they were required to do. Based on that information, uh, they did uh, give us a draft plan of what it is they propose in that location. Would be my recommendation that they need to amend their permit and request an amendment of that permit to give us, go give the board a good outline of what it is they plan to do. Um, I'd also recommend this because part of what they're going to be excavating at that location will involve the permits that have already been renewed out along the corner of Fort Pond and Lemonster, Shirley Road, and adjacent to that. There's three of them. What I'm recommending is to the board is to renew just for two more months for them to request an amendment that would actually outline what it is they're proposing in that location to provide engineered plans so that you would have a full understanding of their intent at that location. That's a road, any, on that one. If you have any questions, I can answer that one or go to the end, however you like to do. So, so if we were to renew 14 through January 31st, yes. then we would ask them when they renew uh, at the first of the year or actually the first of February, uh, they would they would combine 1842 and 14 into one new plan. Yes, um, because when I saw some of the draft, I mean, it do, what they're talking about doing is going to enclose all of those. Mm -hmm. And you really don't have any good plans about what's going to be done on that corner. So this would sort of like bring the three of them together so you have a real good understanding of what they're proposing at that location. That would be my recommendation. Obviously, it is for the board to determine. Mm -hmm. I would make a motion that we uh, follow the recommendation regarding permit 14 to extend to January 31st, allow them to provide plans and to um, incorporate permits 18 and 42 at that time. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The next permit was number 15. 15 is located to the north of the b and Railroad and to the west of Reservoir Road. It's the parcel that's sitting right across the railroad tracks. When this one was also only renewed until the end of this month, what we asked them to do was do some test pits to determine the, how deep they had dug there and how much material they had removed. There was also a condition that said that they had to be 250 feet away from Reservoir Road. And they did provide that information. And based on that information, it was clear they had not excavated too much material. They, they still have excess material. But it was also clear that there is an area to, that's limited not to be within 250 feet of Reservoir Road. There had been some uh, excavation that was done at that location. They did provide some aerial photographs that gave a historical um, oversight of that area. And it appears that that might have been actually done prior to that condition being attached. With that in mind, what I would recommend is that they, this only again, be continued for two months. They need to, I would recommend they provide the board with a closure plan for that area that's located within 250 feet of Reservoir Road. Is, and as a part of that reservoir, uh, that closure plan, that they put some kind of permanent markers so that when the inspector goes out there to look at it, we can see on the, on the ground what's going on. Um, I, have, I would not object or I would recommend that that permit only, like I say, only be renewed for the two months with those as conditions. I would make a motion that we extend uh, the permit number 15 to January 31st, 2019 for a closure plan and the uh, installation of permanent monuments. They probably can't do that by January 31st, but be incorporated into the plan. Second. Any discussion? Now, would, would that closure plan clear up the problem that they had, uh, that we put conditions on it after they did the work? And, that, that would become immaterial if they had the closure plan that followed your guidance, That's correct. Right? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The, the next one is number 16. 16 is a lot more complicated. Um, 16, the permit is located 
north of Lemons to Shirley Road up to the B&M Railroad tracks and then to the north of it. Uh, it encompasses that whole entire area. Uh, next to Lemons to Shirley Road is currently, you know, stockpiling. They're doing their crushing operation. Their settlement ponds where the washing of the material. And then to the north of that, one of the things that the board asks is that they provide uh, test holes as to how deep they had much material they had taken off of that area back there. It was clear that there was too much material taken off. Uh, there were, in some cases, only 18 inches or so above groundwater were supposed to be four feet. The other thing that came out as we were reviewing it, to the east on that site, there is a lot of area that's known as priority habitat for rare species and wildlife. A lot of that area encompasses that. Um, they still they still claim there's some material back up in there that could remove that not subject of this. What I would recommend in a case like this one would be that at, uh, that it be renewed only for two months. That no material can be removed at this point. That they need to provide a closure plan for those areas that where they've excavated too much material. And where there is part of the property within the habitat in rare species area, that they go back to Division of Wildlife to determine whether or not what to what level they could do closure at that place. Because what we're worried about is in some cases with this type of, uh, this type of an area, um, wildlife may not want the thing just to be leveled and smooth out because they use some of the embankments for turtle habitat. So we, do, we don't, I would not recommend that we force them to do things that wouldn't be, uh, would be objectionable to fisheries and wildlife. Um, at that point, they should provide the board with that type of a plan. And if there is any area that has additional material, that that be shown on the plan where that might be. Um, that would be my recommendation on that. And then at that point, really that area up next to Lemonster Shirley Road between there and the B&M, that the earth removal permit should not, be include, should not include that portion of the site. Again, because it is an active uh, manufacturing area. Um, so it's going to really close that permit down to only potentially a very small area to the north of the railroad tracks. But that should be shown on a plan so that we know or the town knows exactly where that is and if there is any material closure plan being subject to the, also the fisheries and wildlife so they can determine what level of closure should be in that area. So in your memo you actually say a conditional uh, um, permit until August 31st? You just mentioned January 31st? Uh, I should, I meant to say, yeah, it says on, just a second here. Um, um, permit 16. Oh, I'm, no, um, okay. What, <laughs> because it was going to take so long for them to provide a closure plan to work with fisheries and wildlife, that's why I felt that it would be better just to continue it to the end of this, this cycle, but no material to be removed at that location. Just give them time to provide you with a plan of what's going on out there. That's why I wanted a little additional time I felt would be appropriate in that condition. So August 31st. Is August 31st, first. yes. And that's the normal end of this particular? Yes. So I would make a motion that we approve a conditional permit until August 31st with the conditions as outlined. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The last one actually is three permits. It is on the south side of Lemons to Shirley Road and to the east of Fort Pond Road. Um, what we asked, or what the board asked of the uh, applicant is to provide a plan that shows what the, basically the topo of that area was. Uh, and also to show a 250 foot boundary between the residential property to the south in this property, and they did do that. Um, with that in mind, it kind of gives us a good baseline of where, what's out there. Um, I would not object if the board wanted to renew that permit as usual, but with the condition 
that the, they provide a 250 foot buffer as a condition now, which does, did not previously exist, a 250 foot buffer on the south side adjacent to the town of Lancaster. I'd make a motion that we renew permits 17, 27, and 30 until August 31st, 2019, subject to a 250 foot buffer to residential property on the southerly side near Lancaster. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. If you want, I can touch briefly on Powell. I'd like you to. Okay, the only, where we stand on that one is we, we extended the permit out, or you extended the permit out on Goodrich. Um, since that time, they have requested that the permit not be renewed. Uh, they want that to expire. Um, that area out there is currently being used for pasture for the horses. And I have talked with the land use director and we don't feel that anything further needs to be done. We just to let that permit expire. Um, it's my understanding with the, um, they have some property up on Lemonster Shirley Road. Uh, they're in the process of working with the planning the bo uh, department and the planning board to present a plan to um, the planning board for their approval as, and at the same time they'll be coming forth with both an earth removal plan and a closure plan for the, the, for the same property at the same moment for that area where they cleared more than what they were allowed to initially. They had bought some additional land and they had taken out some when, without ever getting permission. So, so the one you're recommending we let expire, Just, we'll have a closure plan attached to it as part of this combined new plan. Yes. That, that the closure plan for this, or you already have a closure plan for You this? have a closure, they submitted a okay. drawing, I believe, as yeah, part of it. Okay. That would, would be I, the closure plan. I would make a motion we, um, for earth removal permit 32, that we accept the closure plan and that the earth removal is completed. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, board. Thank you, Thank you for your work on this, very helpful. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. All righty. Our next old business item is a confirmation of the Board of Selectmen vote of November 6, 2018, with regard to the sale and acquisition by the town of the 161 and 171 Gilcrest Street properties. Can you tell us where we are on that? So the Conservation Commission um, met after the November 6th meeting, reviewed the declaration of restriction, uh, had various comments that town council incorporated. They met again last night and um, endorsed the, the version before you, the declaration of restriction. And there's also another document titled Parcel A Deed with Easement. So the town will be executing Parcel A Deed, Deed, and the declaration of restriction is done by the property owner and will be recorded at the same time? Or the I believe so. That's on the property, remaining property. Yeah, that's the first step in the process of a conservation restriction. Okay. So that process, um, the declaration of restriction basically will, uh, is a mirror of what the conservation restriction terms will be, but it has to be filed through the state and there's a process okay. that occurs. I would make a motion we accept the declaration of restriction as presented and authorize the chair of the Board of Selectmen to execute the quit claim. No, that one's coming to the town. Let's say execute all associated documents with the closing of the Make a motion that the chair is authorized to execute all required documents relating to this transfer of property back and forth. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay, me. One nay. Okay. We'll make arrangements to get that done this week. Mm -hmm. All righty. <clears throat> um, we'll pass over the Board of Selectmen goals for now. Town Manager report. Uh, 
An update on the Summer Street project. The drainage installation continues in the Lunenburg section of the project and will continue for two or more weeks uh, longer, weather permitting. The granite curb installation is still ongoing with the goal of installing curbing from Fitchburg to the Baker's Bridge in Lunenburg by the end of the season. The Lemonster section of North Street is scheduled to receive a leveling course of pavement the week after Thanksgiving. This will be a temporary patch just to hold the road together for the winter. Rental and use of the TC Passio space. The school facilities director put together a request for proposals for the rental of the class of classroom space at the TC Passios building that is currently being advertised and proposals are due December 13th. Preference would be given to bidders that require a one year term with the option to extend. Town Council has assisted with drafting an agreement for the revolving museum to enter and use the cafeteria space at the TC Passios building, which has been sent to Jerry Beck for a review. Update on becoming a dementia-friendly community. The action group met on November 7th and discussed adopting a dementia-friendly logo, sending a tax bill insert in the future, and creating a database of individuals with dementia for public safety personnel to better serve those individuals. Also discussed were improvements each sector represented at the meeting could implement, such as better signage and customer service training for staff to recognize individuals with dementia and react with compassion, patience, and kindness. And I think this is, um, while we're on this topic, is something I'd like to extend to all areas of uh, town government, is that there needs to be um, more of that, kindness and civil discourse. And um, I know with the dementia friendly, I, one uh, item we discussed was training with our, our staff, customer service, and um, how to recognize people with dementia and be more patient. Recycling education and outreach in preparation for beginning an educational campaign on recycling. I will be meeting with the director of Mass Toss Cooperative, Tessa David, next week to assist us with outreach and efforts to reduce our contamination rates. Information on how to recycle better and a video from Casella has been shared on the town website, the town Facebook page, and on the public access channel. Trail network and open space maps. Con Conservation Administrator Matt Marrow has been working with Monachusett Regional Planning Commission on updating the GIS maps of all of Lunenburg's trails and open space on a digital map that will become part of a regional trail map on, on MRPC's website will also be used on the business brochure and on our website to promote the natural resources in Lunenburg. Uh, something noteworthy, uh, Matt mentioned that MRPC said to, to him while he was uh, there last, they complimented Lunenburg by that out of, of all their member communities, we've done the most work on our trails. So, Update from the Conservation Commission. The following is an update from the Conservation Commission Chairman Richard Bursch about the, a grant the Conservation Commission applied for through the Department of Conser Conservation um, and Recreation and were awarded to develop a forestry for the bird stewardship, stewardship plan at the Hollis Road property. There is no cost to the town for this service as a consultant will perform the work at the cost of the grant. Under this type of plan, the forester will initially walk the property to develop a site map with land features and characteristics, as well as an inventory of the woodlands, overstory and understory forest growth, wetlands, streams, or other items needed for a bird habitat assessment. The certified forester will assess the forest, looking for unique characteristics needed for bird habitats. Once the initial assessment is performed by the forester, a bird biologist from Mass Audubon will review the data and perform his own assessment on the property and develop recommendations for developing areas of the property best suited for different migratory birds. The biologist will then work with the forester to develop a plan based on his recommendations. Once completed, the biologist will perform a public walk on site to explain his recommendations and how best to achieve them. He and the forester will present the plan at a public meeting. There's no cutting involved in this plan. It is just a review of the property by professionals and their recommendations for use of the property. The plan must be submitted by DCR 
by March 1st. Chairman Richard Bursch shared these sentiments as well. The commission is very excited about moving forward on this property. It currently has a pollinator habitat being developed on this property, which has native shrubs and flowers planted to help attract bees, butterflies, birds, and hummingbirds. The goal of the commission is to develop the entire property into a diverse wildlife park. They envision adding forest walking path loops and wildlife blinds for residents to walk and enjoy the fields, wildlife, and forests. The 60 plus acre parcel will allow residents to get out and walk varying terrain based on time, physical abilities, and viewing preference all within just a few minutes from their homes, apartments, and condominiums in the Whalum area, as well as all the townspeople. Town Council has office hours Tuesday, November 27th, 12 to 4 p.m., and Monday, December 17th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And the following is a list of vacancies, um, paid positions, building commissioner, local inspector, town mechanic, and assistant town mechanic, and a list of vacancies on committees, one uh, regular member and two alternate member positions on agricultural commission, one vacancy on the Architectural Preservation District Commission, um, although we disappointed, or the board did, multiple uh, vacancies on the Cultural Commission. Uh, there's up to 22 members on that commission. The Green Communities Task Force has one vacancy for a citizen at large position. Uh, the board appointed, uh, along with planning board, for the planning board vacancies, so that no longer applies. And Public Access Committee has two vacancies, and the Zoning Board of Appeals, two associate vacancies. That's all I have. Any questions or comments on the town manager report? Okay. Next item we have is a mid-year update from the town manager on her annual goals. This is our new process, and as part of our uh, review process we agreed to a kind of a mid-year update uh, that would be authored uh, as a discussion starting point by the uh, town manager and certainly if there's anything uh, that we review tonight that we want to discuss further we can put it on uh, future agendas so you're still on okay so uh, goal one was to increase public outreach and improve public relations with the action that the town manager will finalize the website and make continuing improvements as needed in access to information. So the website was finalized and went live on Labor Day weekend and users can utilize the subscription feature to receive notifications on any updates to information they are interested in, see the latest news under news and announcements and view posts on the town Facebook page from the live feed. Various updates have been made including new information on recycling better, a new Americans with Disabilities Committee page, a page for information on ROAR and the Interface Program, and the Get Connected page that details the various communication tools the town uses to get information to residents and solicits input on what type of information residents are interested in. The second action of that goal was the town manager will continue to seek input from citizens on current issues, increase and create new two-way communications. On the Get Connected page, the communications questionnaire was created to gather data on how people receive information on town government and the type of information they are interested in. This is on the town website, shared on the town's Facebook page. A public announcement was in the Lunenburg Ledger, and hard copies were made available at the town hall, library, senior center, and at the special town meeting. Interpersonal communication still is a valuable to communication tool to develop community engagement and exchange information. I continue to meet with the business community, community groups such as Roar and Salvation Army, and citizens regarding their concerns with the goal of improving public relations and promoting causes that benefit Lunenburg businesses and residents. The third action under that goal is the town manager will perform communications audit and create a communications policy that identifies strategies and actions to improve communications. So I uh, gave a number of examples of currently communica uh, used communication tools, such as the town website, various social media accounts, uh, the public access channel, public meetings, hearings, forums, 
the annual town report, sign boards, code red, tax bill inserts, the town-wide email listserv, mailers, public notices in the ledger, promotional flyers, and the senior center newsletter. Audit and development of a communications policy is in process. Any comments on goal one? It's a big goal. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> it will be forever an ongoing goal. Uh, comprehensive, goal number two is comprehensive infrastructure plan. Action one, the town manager will continue to develop a com comprehensive inventory and building infrastructure maintenance plan that will include repair and maintenance of town buildings, school buildings, land, recreational areas, roads, and underground infrastructure. The building and infrastructure needs will continue to be included in the capital plan and funded in the operating budget through the facilities account and the town roads account. I plan on continuing to propose increasing the facilities account each year for maintenance and increasing the town roads account by an additional 50,000 each year for pavement, manage, pavement management, including drainage. The submission of the Complete Streets Tier 3 application in October addresses many areas in town that are public safety concerns and increases accessibility for users of all ages and abilities. The town also applied to Mass DOT for funding under the Small Bridge Repair Program for rehabilitation of the Pleasant Street Bridge. We have contacted District 3 offices to advocate for the project and our state delegation race recently sent a letter of support for this project. Action two under that goal, the town manager will continue to address infrastructure needs through recommendations to fund capital projects and recommend a budget that will address annual maintenance of facilities. Um, similar to action one, um, in an effort to address the significant amount of capital requests identified to date in the capital plan, the recommendation at the special town meeting to put additional funds into the special purpose stabilization fund will assist the town with funding these projects in years where there are spikes. Also, given the amount of certified free cash this year, I am confident that we will be able to defer the borrowing for the ladder truck and fund a large number of capital projects. The deferred borrowing will allow for the funds that would have been spent on interest payments to be spent on other capital items or the operating budget. As stated in, under Action 1, it would be Part of my budget recommendation to continue to increase the annual maintenance budgets for facilities and another priority would be to address the needs of the parks. The town was also awarded uh, $198,867 in green communities grant funds to perform a variety of energy efficiency projects that will update old infrastructure and save energy. Other methods to address infrastructure include applying for the ADA projects grant for a variety of ADA improvements at public buildings, the North Cemetery, and access to parks. I will continue to advocate for the facilities projects in the Capital Facilities Bond Bill. Any questions on that? Sure, I have a comment with goal two. Um, I think one problem with goal two is that it has a lot to do with the town's desire for what their future use of the buildings are, and we, we, we really haven't dealt with that and so when when I look at things like the Ritter um, I've thought for some time now the shutters are falling off of it so even if we don't have a big master plan on what to do if when the capital items are being chosen I think we still need to take care of these buildings even in the absence of a of a giant plan and if we can do things that just help the you know the, the general look or as we said with our the funding coming I don't know if you could apply that you know facade money to the things like shutters but there's very small capital items that I think would make a really big visual impact that we can do even if we don't have a gigantic town decision on what to do and that being said again I think it's outside of whether or not it's your goal because it has a lot to do with what the town wants to do on the topic but We've, the town has started to put a lot of input into this space, and we go back to last, I think, December 7th. We did the charrette where we took input on the buildings and the future. We had a nice meeting at the senior center where the seniors gave a lot of input. We had things like the Vertex trial, things we've paid for, and we've collected a lot of information and a lot of data, and we, we don't pull that back in and use it. And um, that being said, when you talked about renting, um, TCP, 
what I immediately thought was a vertex in the $2 million of immediate needs, which were listed as either safety items or um, complete failure items. And I, I don't know at what point, as we continue to use these spaces, we don't at least look at things that we were told are immediate needs of our buildings as we continue to use them. So in terms of this goal, I don't think we're meeting it, because even in the absence of a large town plan, I still think we have to just, at the very least, take care of what we have with something like replace a shutter on the Ritter. Um, and so I think it would be nice if we can come up with ways to take care of the buildings or take care of their their looks without getting into all of the the drama of the decisions instead of it because we're sort of I feel like in a do nothing for some of these things and I think we need to at least do a little um, and um, I, I said to um, Jack Rodequins when I first started as a selectman that my first order of business was new shutters and I wasn't really joking but um, it's just hard to see little things like that remain um, undone. Um, so what I'd like to do with this goal is to continue to look back at the things we've already accomplished and the things we've already l learned and start making changes and start actually doing something because we have a lot of buildings that are still just. Yeah, I, just from being on capital planning, I have to just defend Heather a little bit on that one. Oh, I'm not going after Heather. No, it's just the process. That. I want to explain that's better than it has been. Um, I mean, we did spend some money on the better last year fixing some drainage issues mm -hmm. and um, it, incrementally trying to you know build up this money because there wasn't any any money to do it before. And she's it, you can't see it yet, but she started the process of starting to allocate these funds, starting to address the issue, and uh, I think she's done a good. She's definitely made progress towards that goal. You can't see it yet. But uh, just a side note on the shutters. It's bothered me since I was on the Historic Commission. God knows how many years ago. They added those in the 60s. They weren't part of the original building. So if you want to just tear them off. Well, at the very least, right. we could remove them. And I have, <laughs> yeah. So I was wondering, Bob, you said you put letters on Town Hall in the dark of night. In the middle of the night, we and could take the shutters down. Are there surveillance cameras around the Ritter? <laughs> Somebody would Shutters up higher in the list. Yeah, yeah. yeah if, you, if you look at the original historic building, they, they, there were no shutters on that. Of course, yeah. the building also wasn't painted white, but that's a different discussion. Yeah. <laughs> And I see that you, you've, you, we did appropriate forty thousand dollars within the budget for facilities for deferred maintenance pro yes. projects. So that's an increase. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Damon that. and I agree. We can remove shutters. <laughs> yeah, get rid of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, and just a comment. I mean, it may not uh, seem apparent, but like I mean, the not even two years I've been here. The first one of the first things I had to do coming was making sure the basement was. Uh, clean of mold, the attic, the bird waste was removed, um, that we had a safe environment, that um, we, the building was painted, which required a lot of replacement of rotten wood. That's um, probably why it got yeah. such a good report. <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> but just, I mean, all those things that do take time to put out to bid. And yeah. No, thank you. Like, you. The town hall got the best out of all five, mm -hmm. so <laughs> time well spent. Act, uh, goal number three, to facilitate business and economic development. Action one, the town manager will continue holding sessions for the building, sorry, business community to find ways we can partner with our local businesses and help them grow. Facilitate meetings with other business associations to form regional alliances. I have continued to hold business town partnership meetings with the Lunenburg Business Association and coordinated a joint meeting with the Pepperell Business Association that led to Lunenburg, Lunenburg joining Townsend, Pepperell, and Groton in regional business association events. Action two will work with the regional planning agency and business group to create a business brochure. I applied for and received district local technical assistance to have planning assistance from Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission to create a business brochure. MRPC regional planner, land use director, Adam Burney, and I have continue to meet with the Lunenburg Business Association to develop the brochure, which will be complete in December. Action three, the town manager will create a charge for an economic development committee and work with the committee members. A charge was created and adopted by the board at the November 6th meeting. We are currently accepting talent bank forms for the property owner and business owner spots on this committee. 
any comments on goal three? I, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I think that's one you've done an exceptionally good job on, and and I think by the nature of what we agreed to in the beginning, it's it's almost at a point where it's it's a handoff to the you know the local uh, uh, business. business association, and then be a be a support to them. Mm -hmm. So I think you've done an exceptional job on that one, and I I appreciate it. I would want to continue work, wing, work yeah. with that group. I really um, think it's an important connection that the town have with mm -hmm. the business community. But goal number four, advanced human resource management. Action one, complete comprehensive update of personnel policies and procedures continue to do annually in July. The board reviewed and updated various policies and procedures at the workshop in July and October and made amendments to section 7.04 alcohol and drug policy and section 7.11 quarry policy. The social media policy is the only personnel policy that is proposed to be updated. That remains. Action two, create an employee handbook. All employee related policies in one place and given to all employees. And this is ongoing action. Action three, create and implement performance evaluations for non-management. This action is also ongoing. New performance evaluations were included in the most recent DPW collective bargaining agreement. Any comments on goal four? It's great. Goal five, create written procurement process and procedures. Um, both actions are still ongoing. Um, but just to detail what they are, the town manager will develop written procedures for the proper procurement of supplies and services and construction. will create internal controls that will alleviate any potential violation of procurement law and create another control against fraud. The town manager will create centralized location of all procurement files. So um, actions are, we have unwritten policies and procedures that occur um, as far as purchase orders and um, how they're approved, that process, and any questions um, that would uh, I have would be answered by department heads that are submitting those purchase orders, as well as uh, procurement files. I do um, receive all copies of contracts, which the town accountant does as well. And that's good. I think overall this process is a good kind of mid-year check-in. Yeah. Uh, I think we should spend some time reflecting on this and, and build it into our agendas in the, in the coming uh, month or two so that we, we ensure that we close out some of the ones that are doable within this year and begin to formulate our thinking for setting our goals for, for next year. Mm -hmm. And also it should inform uh, our agenda items for the the remainder of this year well for forever but you know for the remainder of this year good job though and i Thank appreciate you. the uh the detail that's involved in doing this report because that's a goal unto itself is actually document what you're doing so that we can actually see what's happening mm -hmm. and, I, and i just to remind you of things we talked about that on the monthly uh, on the weekly town manager report she refers back to the connection to these goals so that's a supplement to this I don't think they take each other's place but they go they go hand in hand and again I remind you that our joint meeting with the school committee said that we we have one in front of us to say you know create one that we can share with them and I think it's just a compilation of work we've already done but what makes the most sense to share mm -hmm. with the school committee because we promised them but with anybody else you think it would be helpful to, to share any other Discussion on the mid-year update. Okay. I have minutes for October 2nd and November 13th, the short meeting prior to the special town meeting. I have an accounts payable warrant in the amount of $220,939.43. Is there any action file issues? Well, I, I have a question for Heather. Did we hear back on the um, Northfield rear piece of property on whether or not the town owned that piece of land from I town meeting? I have not heard from okay. back from the resident. Yeah. Just curious. Thank you. And it wouldn't be 
my last meeting if I didn't ask the question of anything new on the gas station. <laughs> Just to keep that keep that on our still agenda. an ongoing um, discussion between um, the land use director, myself, and town council, mass development. Yeah. So the, we the, hope to the, bring something. The the other thing is that if if it's a complicated. Yeah. <laughs> if we talk about um, that abuts mm -hmm. the Marshall Pond land that the town owns mm -hmm. and that theoretically could possibly become an entrance to conservation type thing, which then you might not have to clean it up for reuse type of thing. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, if we want to do commercial, it might make sense to talk to the large landowner that's abutting it in the center of town mm -hmm. and whether they might be interested in something for it too. So, Good suggestions. And one other thing I was thinking based on the public comment about um, cemetery mm -hmm. is um, MRPC helped Shirley and map out um, a whole system using GIS. And I don't know if that's something they might want to look into because in that article they talk about doing research and, uh, and mm -hmm. what they did was they compiled all that information in Shirley and then they fed it into some type of um, you know, computer program where it became searchable. And so it seems like it's almost like that is the, the, the beginning of that process. And what they have now is you can go to their site, you can search a name, mm -hmm. it'll bring you right on a map to where you could go visit that um, person. Mm -hmm. And so if we have all this work to do with organizing the cemetery, we might be able to reach out to MRPC and or Shirley and see what they did. So I feel like we might be doing a lot of that work already and maybe come up with a really organized endpoint as a result of a little bit of of a disorganized event, I guess. So, so the, the, the Lundberg Cemetery already has that software okay. and you can already do the, the, the process. The issue becomes these are stones that may or may not be a duplicate of a stone on somebody's grave. Okay. Therefore, why didn't they get rid of it if it was already a duplicate? Or my understanding is some of them were broken stones that were brought to the office to be fixed that were never fixed and therefore are not where they should be. So th okay. I think they have a good handle for where all the graves are. I think it's the putting these extra grave stones to where are they supposed to be? Are they extra? Because there was one that theoretically is in Devon's versus the other ones that may not be okay. where they're supposed to be. But that's how will we know that <laughs> type of. <laughs> Well, basically, it's the responsibility of the cemetery. No, Jewish. but Bob just knows yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. and, and the reason I happen to know is that I, I was at the DPW building mm -hmm. talking to the sewer manager when I was on the sewer commission, and the then cemetery commissioner was there, and he was on a thing, and I was interested in genealogy, and it's like, what do you got? And he showed me, and you can click, and it'll actually have a picture of the stone, it'll show where it is, and all the different things like that. So. The importance of capability to put that on our website, though, so people can search. Mm -hmm. And I think, it, yeah, because I think it's actually tied into the statewide system, okay. whatever that statewide system, whether it's private or whatever, then you can actually look it up now. So, mm -hmm. okay, thank Great. you. And you, you can pick your future spot. Oh boy, <laughs> it's the layaway plan. <laughs> <laughs> Any committee reports? Yeah, just update that the capital planning committee met tonight. Uh, with the police and fire departments to discuss their capital needs. Um, just to highlight the request for this year, fire department is looking for two vital sign monitors for the ambulances. They, uh, the total will be $15,000 for those. Um, their pumper truck at the tune of $685,000 uh, needs to be replaced. It's been on the capital plan for a number of years. Um, and they also have an ambulance on there for $310,000. Um, the good news is, should we replace the pumper in the ambulance, the next vehicle isn't on there until 2026 when there's replacement of the other ambulance. Mm. Um, the police for this year had um, $116,000 for two cruisers, one marked, one unmarked, uh, and about $16,000 for rifles and shotguns. And the interesting point that Chief brought up was the uh, Ford is going to be start offering hybrid police vehicles and it might be beneficial for the town to pursue purchasing those and um, if we do then we'll need to look at getting some charging stations for the police station but uh, it seems to be the road we might be going down. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other committee reports? Okay. 
Uh, no department reports. We had several this we evening, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, our upcoming schedule, uh, we have no more meetings in November. We have our next meeting is December 4th. We have meetings on December 4th, 11th, and 18th. Do we have a workshop scheduled for December yet? We do not. Okay, so we'll, we'll work on that and mm -hmm. see if we have any come up. Uh, before I entertain a motion to enter executive session, is there any public comment from the public? Please. Dave Passios, 56 Whiting Street. Bob, your comments a few minutes ago and your knowledge of the uh, system available for searching uh, cemetery sites is exactly what everybody's been talking about for the last few weeks, that your wealth of knowledge of town, state, and you know, all types of affairs is just going to be so missed. Um, you, know, you and I grew up, grew up in this town and uh, you know, have collected a lot of history, and especially you, you seem to seem to be able to pull a bit out of every conversation and uh, use it somewhere down the road. So uh, thank you for all your dedication, and uh, good luck in the future. Um, not kicking you out the door, but I have a question. Um, in the absence of a citizen's petition to call a special election, uh, when would we be hearing from this board as to what they plan to do for the vacant seat? It is our plan to have an agenda item on our December 4th uh, agenda to talk about the potential for uh, an election and to talk about the reorganization of this board given uh, Bob's resignation, including assignments that Bob holds on behalf of the selectmen to other boards and committees okay so that'll be a discussion on the December 4th agenda okay thank you very much again Bob thank you thank you any public comment from the board I guess I would just make one last one of thank you Bob and I guess the importance of each individual human brain and yours will be missed <laughs> thank you I, I often talk that I often have ran, random access memory that I won't remember something until somebody says the topic and it's like I remember Jim Damon saying this back here and why that comes in I don't know but Heather has my cell phone if you know, <laughs> I'm not giving it out to everybody but but if you've got a question you can go through the town manager and she has access and I've, I've told her that she can can continue to call me as long as she needs to and we can dial in during meetings <laughs> <laughs> can I ask you to make our motion oh dear I would move that we enter executive session under Mass General Law Chapter 30, subsection 20, reason three, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation where an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the government's litigating position and assuming that the chair so declares, namely O'Brien Homes Incorporated against Town of Lunenburg, Land Court Docket Number 3, Miscellaneous 477878 through 13, Miscellaneous 477887, in O'Brien Holmes versus the Town of Lunenburg Planning Board, Appeals Court Docket Number 2018-P1520. Second. Second. All those in favor, Mrs. Adams? Aye. Mr. McQuaid? Aye. Mr. Ebersaw? Aye. And I for myself. Good night, everybody.